Dear Kelly, yes, I love you. My love does not change because you are in jail. I care about your life. Dear Kelly, I want you to know as you know, when I left you, I was crying. I was feeling discouraged and disheartened. There is a part of me that wants to grab you, shake you, and scream, Stop killing yourself! Dear Kelly, I find it hard. It seems as if I write and write with little response. Kelly Ann Evoy. Back in 1973, she was a bright, wide-eyed little girl, desperate for love and a place to call home. She was uh, big, big brown-eyed, very active, high, high energy, very creative, quite articulate for a five-and-a-half-year-old, and had incredibly impulsive, high-speed behaviors. Patricia Morgan and her husband, Les, adopted Kelly 26 years ago. They brought her here, to their home in Sarnia, Ontario. Kelly would be big sister to two-year-old Ben. She was a handful. So it was not uncommon to find her on the neighbor's roofs or under garbage cans or having, and having a struggle in school. Before coming to live with the Morgans, Kelly had already been through several foster homes and one failed adoption. Now back then, 26 years ago, adoption agencies would say, well, congratulations, have a great life, and away they would go. But things would not be easy. Ten chaotic years followed. Kelly was a restless child, then a disruptive and hostile teen. Kelly started shoplifting and experimenting with drugs. Patricia's frustration grew. Heated arguments followed. Oh, things like, you're driving me crazy. Will you please stop this? Uh, how many times do we have to go through this? Uh, what, what, are you, what are you wanting here? Um, too many kind of parental yelling. Sometimes my husband would join in, and sometimes he would just sit and shake his head. But Kelly lived by her own agenda, and at age 16, she ran away from home. It was 1984. Kelly settled into a biker clubhouse in Kitchener, Ontario. For Kelly, it was like coming home. Patricia was frantic. Unable to reach Kelly, she began writing her letters. Dear Kelly, I do expect one day a phone call telling me you are dead. Why, with all the other crazy phone calls, why not? I do feel an ache when I think of you. Dear Kelly, I have no idea how you arrived in jail again, and as far as sending my love, it makes no difference. Dear Kelly, when I cannot do much because of distance and not knowing how to reach you, I make do with what is available to me, writing to you and hoping. Love to you, dear Mom. I was hoping that it would maintain a life, some kind of lifeline from myself to Kelly. Also, to plant the seed that there was somebody available for her if and when she ever decided to turn around. Years passed. Kelly had two children, became addicted to alcohol and crack cocaine. She was entrenched in a violent world. Kelly was in and out of jail and the hospital, surviving by stealing and dealing drugs. But still, Kelly's mother kept writing. Dear Kelly, I guess the guardian angel I sent you is not doing a very effective job. A month ago, it was a stab in your back, and soon after that, a leaky breast, now kidney problems. My dear Kelly, you told me once that you chickened, or whatever that phrase is, six times requiring the ambulance to come and revive you after overdosing on cocaine. My dearest Kelly, you called last month to say your chin bones were broken. You were in a hospital and your mouth was going to be wired in position for six weeks. Dad and I sent flowers and I sent a letter. Where are you? I was writing letters for years, uh, up to a point where I almost gave up. And I'd been writing six or seven years. Sometimes she would go four or five. The most was six months where I wouldn't know where she was. Kelly's life was spiraling downward. Was stabbed, beaten, and nearly died. She received her mother's letters 
but rarely responded. Yes, but then, finally, a small crack in the armor. After 11 years of drugs, alcohol, and violence, Kelly was growing weary of barely surviving. In jail again in London, Ontario, Kelly called her mom in Calgary to pick her up. Kelly was worn out, but Patricia's letters had been a lifeline. Often, they were the only comfort in an otherwise terrifying existence. I got really used to um, partying with people and then finding out the next day they were dead. They got shot by another one of my friends or stuff like that, you know. Rip off went down and you want to find out so-and-so's dead or so-and-so deed last night and just, just a lot of crazy stuff. But the letters finally won out. Hundreds of them, mailed every two or three weeks over 11 years, all carrying one message from a mother. Kelly, I love you. For me, it was a symbol of not giving up hope. Also gave her the, the message, the message I wanted to send was, there's somebody here on the other side who welcomes you. I really appreciated it because the people I hung out with in the world I lived in, nobody got letters from their family. Most of them had ruined their relationships with their families. Kelly went on to spend three months in a rehab center in Windsor. That was six years ago. Where's the cat food? Today, Kelly and Patricia have a lot in common. They're both mothers and both survivors of a physical and emotional roller coaster that lasted more than a decade. I was telling a close friend about my struggle to keep my feelings of hope about your future. Kelly and Patricia have turned their experience into a book called Love Her As She Is, Lessons from a Daughter Stolen by Addictions. I promised myself that I would do something with these letters and they represent my hope. That this would unfold like just exactly where we were standing here looking at each other. Now, Kelly and her mom are making up for 11 lost years. I think of all you've taught me. You've shared your struggle with life, shared the truth of your addiction. Patricia still worries about her daughter's future. Kelly will battle her addictions for the rest of her life. Don't grab salt and pepper for me. But for now, today, things are good. And that is much more than either Kelly or Patricia dreamed possible 11 years and countless letters ago. Dear Kelly, I decided that I want more to unconditionally, simply, and truly love and acknowledge you, Kelly, for you, the beautiful, lovable, creative, powerful you, as is. I love you as you are. Mom.